And we can teach young men or, or girls how to navigate who they are and to make meaning of these moments beyond simple uh, right and wrong sort of uh, processes. We also know that style is a place for us to figure out who kids are as well, as you can see here. One of the biggest challenges we found in the, with the boys that we work with is that people forget that they're boys. They tend to treat them as adults and the expulsion rates are very important. For some people's style, and these are some of our undergraduates from Penn who were part of the project, um, style matters in how young people navigate stressful moments. So we're interested in that as well. In our martial arts condition, you can see this young man here is participating, but he's adding a little flavor. This flavor we find is also important in kids learning, not simply. Here the young man dribbles through a, through a guy's legs, crosses over, and then passes behind his back. And at this time, Alan Iverson's crossover dribble was, was very important to identity. And as, you've, as you watch, you can see how much enjoyment the kids are having after that moment. And it's, it's this kind of energy that we think can be used in a, in a variety of ways, therapeutically, not simply for the sake of uh, physical activity, but also teaching kids how to navigate these moments on a court or, or outside the court. But the final thing I'd like to say about what we're trying to do is teach young people how to um, realize the context they're in. For the boys that we're working with, um, racism is a big issue. How do they navigate conflicts with cops are big issues. How to navigate uh, getting to school is a big issue. Um, and in some respects, we don't think the conflicts are the definition of who they are. Um, my brother, some of you may know, has a wonderful quote that says, um, we are never um, to be identified as the worst thing that we have done. And in some respects, we look for these conflicts as a way for the boys to redefine themselves, um, and therapeutically so. So in, in a lot of ways, um, the biggest challenge we have for schools and adults to see African American boys is to see them as boys first, humans, before we get to any other kind of intervention or any kind of social entrepreneurial activity. Um, because in some respects, um, even with resources, um, if you don't see these young people as human, um, whatever enterprise you're trying to engage in is not going to um, matter as much. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end there except to say that one of the ideas that relate to um, participating uh, in this work is um, how could we actually think about um, phys ed, recess, um, and uh, engagement in sports as therapy as opposed to simply uh, athletic competition, um, as simply as um, a break from academics, but as a way to promote how kids think about themselves, how they actually fight for themselves, how they speak up about themselves, how they debate political uh, or, or sports arguments. Um, and, and in a lot of respects, I think um, that's an idea that's still yet to be developed, an idea that's still yet to be promoted in the context of, of entrepreneurship. And in a way, I think we tend to separate these two. The idea of what people do athletically and how they think intellectually are very different phenomenon for most folks. Um, and if you look at the brain research on this, it's quite compelling as to the benefits that come from kids engaged in, in, in athletic activity, whether it's competitive or even non-competitive. Um, and I think that's just one idea that hasn't been harnessed yet. There's a proverb that we use in our, in our work called the, the, the lion's story, an African proverb. It says, a lion's story will never be known as long as the hunter is the one to tell it. So in our work, we're trying to think about how can we help young people tell their story in the way that they like to tell it um, without it being um, despised or stereotyped or dismissed, um, and yet in the, in, the, in the context of their world still achieve both emotionally and academically. Um, an ancillary project we have along with this is, is working in black barbershops. How do we, we're currently teaching black barbers to um, provide HIV, AIDS, and um, retaliation violence reduction information to, um, through bar as barbers through, um, to their patrons while they're cutting their hair. And what we're finding out is that, that black men between the ages of 18 and 24 
are sharing more stuff with their barbers than they are with their pastors, with their therapists, uh, and even with their friends. Um, and so in a sense you have a wonderful, I think, opportunity for a mental health system if we could navigate it, if we could build it, that's culturally relevant um, and in many respects uh, healing. Um, but these are still ideas that I think consider racial realities, um, not simply um, um, uh, social ones, and in, in many respects still brings us back to that place of how do we help um, folks tell the story um, um, in, their, in their own lives. So I'm going to stop there. Thank you.